Good day everyone. We are now in our second part of our lecture series on criminological research process, approaches, and design. And we are now into the research approaches. So what are the research approaches that we can use in answering our research problem? There is no single approach that is the best one among all of the approaches. But it all de depends on your the, the situation, the condition, the environment, your resources, the feasibility of your topic and or your study, and so on and so forth. So when you choose an approach on how to attack a given research problem in your research study, you should judiciously choose among these approaches. So what are research approaches? It could be either basic or applied ideographic or nomothetic, inductive or deductive, and qualitative or, or quantitative. So let us start with the first set of approaches, basic versus applied research. Is your research a basic one or applied one? So we'll know, with, uh, we'll know through these definitions and the given examples. So for basic research, it is conducted to generate an advanced knowledge that has no immediate practical applications. No immediate practical applications. The application is for the, the generation of knowledge, new knowledge only. The new knowledge. But we can use this new knowledge to create intervention programs against a certain practical problem. So the basic research it indirectly solves a given practical problem one example is my study our study together with my previous students criminology students bless gaga and janice babayos we studied uh, we tested the, the general strain theory if you're a criminology student or a criminologist for sure you know what is a general strain theory we tested this because it was tested in many countries in the world but we had no study in the philippines or only one uh, during the time of that writing uh, only one but they in that study that the researcher in that study uh, used a different type of um, type of variables type of sample but here we use an empirical national sample so uh, that's what made this study unique so it was a test of a theory and it was a basic study just to generate knowledge and out of the knowledge we can create programs or if practitioners in different departments of our government will will adapt our recommendations so they can create programs out from the study so it's just a basic study that has no immediate practical application just testing the theory but practitioners can use the data from our study to support or the findings of our study to support their given or their design programs next uh, type uh, next approach of research is applied research we can also uh, conduct applied research but this is time consuming um, resource consuming so it aims to inf why because it aims to inform authorities on what are promising policies that could improve practice in the field of criminal justice so for example in this study uh, by Radcliffe, Taniguchi, Groff, and Wood, they they conducted an experiment to determine the effective the effectivity of or the effectiveness of foot patrol. Foot patrol has been regarded as as obsolete already, but they in their experiment they demonstrated that foot patrol was so effective was effective in preventing uh, preventing violent crimes. So let us read, for example, target areas outperformed the control size by 23% resulting in a total net effect. One display was considered of 53 violent crimes prevented. So the results suggest that targeted foot patrols in violent crime hotspots can significantly reduce violent crime levels as long as threshold level of violence exists initially. So foot patrol was, was, was dis rediscovered by these researchers that it was really effective based on the data so it is an applied research uh, there was a, re a program patrol and then study the program so that's what makes it an applied research there what uh, does it mean that it has an immediate uh, immediate 
practical application immediate practical application so with this data we can say that oh we, let's conduct foot patrol or we do not conduct fat patrol so it has immediate uh, practical application that's why it's called applied research some examples of these are policy evaluation and program evaluation so if you want to study tokhang uh, project of the government of the duterte government in the past so it can be considered as an applied research next set of approaches it could be either ideographic or nomothetic so your research could be either nomothetic or ideographic so it depends on your topic and it depends on your resources it depends on whether you can visibly uh, um, conduct it or not so first ideographic so it studies one case or few cases to have an in-depth investigation so in-depth meaning you can uh, study a lot of factors even the, the entire picture of the whole situation or the whole problem so you can study uh, use you can do that using ideographic research you can study few cases but you can study a lot of factors no on a given social problem so for example we we had one study published together with Nora Maria Elena Osmenia in our study Filipino children adolescent stories of sexual abuse uh, in this study uh, Mom Osmenia conducted an interview about 10 10 or 12 10 to 12 uh, victims of rape who were children adolescents at the time of their rape uh, or sexual assault against them so we we published this paper already in the Journal of Child and Adolescent Trauma back in 2021 so only 10 female filipino but even if there were only 10 of them but we gathered a lot of data so through the interviews of mom Usminia, she gathered a lot of experiences data about the experiences so it's holistic so the entire experience no, the entire experience of the individuals the 10 female although few but it could be we use it to have an in-depth investigation of numerous factors that is why it's called ideographic next nomothetic research it studies several cases but uses few factors so it is the opposite of ideographic so uh, we study uh, several cases like hundreds of cases 200 cases or 1000 samples uh, adolescents uh, but it can only study a very few factors no, compared to ideographic and ideographic is holistic when you interview a person that person can tell you or that person can tell you all of her experiences in terms of sexual assault whereas in nomothetic it is limited because you use a questionnaire you use a questionnaire because for example here in the study by in her study by Amy Butler she published it in child abuse and neglect journal it's entitled child sexual assault risk factors for girls she studied 1087 girls so it is really impossible for her to finish this study on time if she used ideographic type of research interview in-depth investigation so she used nomothetic research through uh, surveys but she only managed to gather very few factors so because it is yes it was limited through questionnaire so you just send a questionnaire then only a few because uh, a respondent cannot answer a very long questionnaire she may not answer everything so a very uh, just a short questionnaire uh, well, two to five pages might do so, but the downside is we cannot gather a lot of information from the respondents using nomothetic but the positive positive side is that we can gather information from a lot of respondents so we can generalize generalize from the sample here we cannot generalize this only 10 female filipino children for the the geographic but we can have a lot of information so those are the sound downside but you can also combine the two nomothetic and geographic next inductive versus deductive research so in inductive research so it deals with theory so if you have a theory just like earlier the general strain theory if you test the theory that is deductive research but if you create the theory out of your study 
that is inductive research. Again, if you have already the theory, you have the books in criminology, you have a lot there of theories. If you test those theories in the Philippines, that the tests that you conduct, we call that deductive research because it's from a general theory, so from general to specific data. So you, you, you test the general theory, a theory with your specific data. So we call that deductive research. How about inductive? So it's the opposite. You collect data, you look at the data, summarize the data, look at the patterns, and out of the patterns of the data, you create a theory or provisional hypothesis. But it could be that you use these two. First, you conduct inductive, then you conduct an, uh, subsequent studies, you conduct deductive research. So you can also do that, but that's time consuming. So in inductive research, research analyzes data. And out of this analysis, he or she attempts to build a proposition or a theory. So a hypothesis or a theory. But in a deductive, the researcher analyzes data to test a given theory. There's already a theory you know, that explains crime. For example, general strain theory, it explains crime that if a child experiences negative events in his or her life, it will produce in him or her negative emotions. And because of negative emotions, it can push her or push her or him to commit a crime. So that's general strain theory. So here in the examples, example in, our, in my study, in I, in my study, I published this already, already in Asian Journal of Criminology, entitled The Role of Problematic and Improved Indicators of Risky Lifestyle in Self-Control Lifestyle Framework of Victimization Among Filipino Adolescents. Here, I tested the self-control lifestyle framework of victimization. So, it was a deductive research. Now, another example is from Marie Rosenkratz, Landy Gard, Jody Miller, and Reynald. They use grounded theory methods to create or to reform a certain theory in their study. If you have time, you can read these articles. Next type of approach we have the quantitative versus qualitative approach so uh, quanti quanti so meaning it uses numerical data numbers just like survey um, what else you collect data about crimes crime statistics so these are quantitative research on the other hand we have also what we call qualitative quality Quality. We use words, voice, photos, or videos, or actions of the participants or respondents. We record them, obtain, uh, obtain them through interviews, observation, and then analyze them. For example, in my study, uh, doing the dialogical narrative analysis implications for narrative criminology. Here, I analyzed the, the news stories in the Philippines and how the prevailing narratives or the stories in the public sphere public sphere in the Philippines uh, was associated with certain policies in the drug campaign or the war on drugs, whether it stopped or revived. So I found that there was really uh, there was really a relationship. So I demonstrated there was a relationship between the prevailing narratives in the public sphere and a certain policies in the war on drugs. So when I found out that the certain kind of there was a certain kind of the romantic narrative and uh, trans, uh, the romantic narrative and uh, apocalyptic narrative those narratives if they prevail in the public sphere if they prevailed in the public sphere uh, war on drugs continued but if tragic narrative prevailed in the public sphere I observed that the war on drugs was stopped by Duterte. So several several suspensions of the war on drugs because of the prevailing narratives in the public sphere. So I analyzed the, the news stories in the public sphere. So those are words. So it was qualitative. On the other, we have quantitative. For example, in our study, we tested the self-control theory. We surveyed students in Negros Oriental State University in Dumaguete City. We surveyed them through a questionnaire, we analyzed the data, we used uh, statistics to determine the relationship of the different variables about regression statistics and so on and so forth. So it was a quantitative 
research. So, with the question, which is better? Which is better, quantitative or qualitative? There's no such thing as the best approach, as I said earlier. So, it depends on your how you attack a given problem. If you have a problem on drug use, for example, illegal drug use or use of shabu, you can survey drug users, but it is difficult because you have no list of drug users unless you have uh, you have obtained a list from the talk but it's confidential so that's difficult to survey drug users or survey the entire city that is time consuming and labor intensive and you will probably spend a lot of money but I said you but uh, the other alternative is you use qualitative qualitative method quality when in you can just we can uh, you can find uh, actual drug users you can interview them just 8 to 10 to 20 drug users you can do that so through qualitative so it is uh, ideographic research so all of these approaches ideographic uh, basic they are they are they they overlap they overlap the quantitative can be can, uh, it, it can be a basic research the quantitative can also be uh, an applied research and so on and so forth so they overlap again there's no best there's no best or better among these dichotomy of approaches. It depends on what you can do, what you can achieve in a given time, your target. So use, you just use these approaches as tools to achieve your goal. So I think that would be all for this part of lecture series. Thank you very much for listening. Have a good day and God bless you.